we, Christina um, and I think Dave Cuesta, well, he will also, are at the council meeting tonight. Because oh, of okay. the holiday yesterday, the council meeting got pushed to tonight. Gotcha. Oh. That makes sense. We're unsupervised, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've lived in Colorado since 94, and I have not seen a summer snow this early. Was, I, I don't know if it's a record. It's a record for me. Uh, it's been a crazy summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember somewhere in the mid-90s there, Scott, there wasn't there a year where it... Um, it was like the very last day of summer, I think. Technically. 95. Yeah. 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 I remember I was working nights downtown and riding the bus home that night, the 15 bus out Colfax, all the way from downtown to Colorado Boulevard. The only lights I saw were National Jewish, where they had generators. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was really, really weird. That is very strange. Yeah. I hope that I doesn't happen tonight. Yeah. Amy, you just jinxed it. <laughs> <laughs> I spent all day yesterday covering my garden, so I'm hoping it makes it. Me too. Well, all this snow, I don't know, man. That's some pretty prolonged coldness. Yeah. Do you use like a, a plastic sheets and kind of ventilate them, or what you do? I just use regular sheets and like pull them up over top, which usually will do fine in a frost, but I don't think if we're supposed to get this much snow, that's not going to cut it. Yeah. yeah. My husband bought some frost blankets, but they don't, they only go down to 28 degrees. So we'll see how they do. But my mom gave me the idea of putting like newspaper underneath that because she said that would help insulate them. So couple extra degrees yeah yeah so we'll see good luck marie what's your little guy's name this is kaiji he's having a rough time oh. <laughs> it's adorable hey, thank you can you say hi mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> Okay, so Scott, we do have a quorum. Okay. Um, Guy did confirm that we were starting the meeting at six. So maybe with weather or something, but we do have a quorum if you want to go ahead and start. Sure, I can do that. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, all right, uh, I'm calling this meeting of the uh, Englewood Public Library Board to order. Um, Debbie, could you do the roll call, please? Yes. Um, okay, we have Scott Gilbert. Present. Helene Federici. She's present, present there. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sarah Harkness. Here. Marie Hoda. Here. Um, we have Inglewood School Liaison, or we have Amy Wilson. Here. I'm looking at the Inglewood School Liaison, Jen Hubbard. Here. And staff, we have Mark Mollis. Here. Um, excused Council Member Cuesta, who's attending City Council meeting, along with Director Christina Underhill. All right, thanks. Okay. Um, I don't know if anyone's had a moment to look at the minutes yet, but if you could uh, do so, and then um, 
someone could uh, either move to approve or say they see a problem. Debbie, you know I think those are, those are old minutes. I was going to say, I, yeah, <laughs> that's the August. Okay, let's, I was going to say that motion was from back in. I'll move to approve them. Unless you want to wait. <laughs> And Marie, that was you? Yes. Okay. And do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, okay. thanks, Lynn. Okay. Approval of the minutes has been moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, minutes are approved. Um, anyone here for public comment? We don't get much public comment. <laughs> just raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, in the library we do. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, let's see here. I got new printer paper. It's really sticky. It's hard to pull off one page at a time. Um, okay. Um, well, Let's go to uh, reports then, since there's no public comment. Um, library statistical report for uh, August, please. Okay. Debbie, you want to screen share? Or? I'm trying to. Oh, okay, well, sorry. <laughs> I had um, uploaded the August ones. So um, let's. I can I can hold my printout up and I can of the I can screen share too. I think I can do it. Let's see. Everyone see that? Yes. Okay. Do you have Great. that? Yeah. Okay. okay. So um this will look really similar to the last few months. I mean it's been a similar trajectory from July. Um Physical visitors were, as again, combining curbside pickups, take and makes, and then our in-person visitors, which during this period was still computer-based appointments. And of course, that's switched now to walk-ins. Um, circulation, um, roughly the same kind of numbers we saw from the last few months, where you had about one quarter of our normal physical materials circ, about uh, uh, 1.5 to 2 times on digital materials, and then leading to about a 50% total CERC number from what we'd have here, you know, on a normal year. Um, and again, those holds filled look pretty good because everything's through holds these days. Um, questions answered is we, we try to keep track of that, but that's always a little bit rough because it's based, you know, it's a little, sometimes it's a judgment call what you count or what you don't count. Um, that's just us answering the phones. And then internet computer usage is 78. So that was our number of visitors over the course of the month of August. And that was using the appointment-based system. That is a very low number. Um, we exceeded that in the first week of switching to walk-ins and actually in the first three days of switching to walk-ins. So um, yeah, that's, it's been a little different. Um, children's program attendance was pretty, I mean, the attendance at the individual programs was good. Um, young adult, same thing you've seen before. And we're unfortunately, oh, I, I, you know what? We're missing our adult numbers there. Um, so I'll send an updated version with the adult numbers. Um, we really only had a handful of adult programs. Well, one of those was the um, uh, How to Be an Anti-Racist, Reading and Dialogue on Race with uh, Mayor Linda Olson and Councilmember Cheryl Wink. Um, 
and that was really well attended. We had 55 people uh, virtually attend our first session, which is a very large book club. Um, so we we're really happy with that. We were broke into small groups and um, had really good conversations. Uh, last Thursday, we had, our, we had the second uh, session of that book club um, and we had 40 people for the second one. Um, and that's great. You know, that kind of drop off, you know, in a three parts, pro, three, three part program is that that's actually pretty good uh, for attention. So um, any questions about any of that? You, you know, talked about like the, the first three days and, and uh, I'll admit I've been pretty out of touch. Um, is the library reopened to um, physical? Oh, as, uh, and I, and I think I might, I might be slightly exaggerating attendance based on the first three days. It's probably more like the first five to get to that number. But um, uh, yeah, we, we're doing right now, and that, that's actually one of the upcoming items is um, okay. library reopening. Well, yeah, I so. won't jump the gun then. It's okay, just, yeah, uh, let's talk about that in a minute here. Um, Well, did anything here surprise you? Not after the last few months. I think this is basically the same trajectory we've been seeing. I'd say, I mean, I'm, I'm pleased with the robustness of the elevated circulation of digital materials. Um, that I kind of would expect that to be coming down faster than it is back to baseline. Um, mm -hmm. And it's staying up, which means hopefully that we're seeing a long-term behavioral change you know like they're like you know people are just kind of getting they've gotten used to the platforms they like the they like the product they like the you know way that downloading audiobooks through hoopla and overdrive and all that stuff works and so they'll keep doing it that's interesting it's been a weird few months i've i've uh, read that um some people predicted that, that offices will never be the the be all and end all of work life like they were for so long. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I think. A question about yeah. the virtual visitors. Uh, what constitutes a virtual visitor? Great, a query question. Um, so that's compiled from Google Analytics from two different sources. One is for the anglewoodco.gov slash library website. Um, any traffic to that page or any of the sub pages um, on the city's website. And that's actually a very small percentage of our overall traffic um, because most of our users will go straight to the other one that we track and that's englewood.marmot.org, which is the catalog page. Um, and so the co combined, so Google Analytics, uh, total visitors, not uniques, but total visitors um, for those two sites combined is what informs the, virtu the virtual visitors. Um, the most of our promotional materials, um, library handouts, library cards, um, even I think our Facebook page, we link to englewood.marmot.org instead of to englewoodco.gov slash library um, because, uh, and this is actually another thing that we'll talk about in a little bit when we talk about new library website stuff, um, it, most, most library user of website user surveys indicate that the reason people go to the library's website first and foremost is to do catalog searches. Um, and so that's why we route people there and it first and then they can from there go to the library's actual website where we have informational stuff if they want to. Um, we've tried to set it up. I've worked with the communications department even recently um, to, to get a catalog search bar embedded on the englewoodco.gov slash library site and it doesn't seem to work with the current CMS. Uh, we've, we, we've, it's just throwing bizarre iframe errors that uh, even the <laughs> developer was unable to debug. So um, we're, that's, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about, you know, tr trying to launch this new website and kind of what's going on internally with uh, the new, the city getting a new website too, so. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Are there any other questions or discussion items on the uh, um, statistical report for August? Okay, let's go to the uh, library action plan, please. Okay. Seeing this still? Uh, 
Okay, so increasing awareness of the library throughout the community. Um, yeah, so we wanted to, um, you know, we've been trying a few different things to kind of keep in touch with our community partners and and to keep marketing the library. You know, we've kept you up to date on most of those those efforts. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention is that we've been reaching out to some of the local community organizations just to see what we could do to help and then just be in touch, especially as we have started to announce that we're, you know, letting people back in the library. We wanted, um, you know, people in need in the community to be aware of the resource. And I'm, if I move too quickly, stop me for questions, please. Um, Increasing library engagement with the teen population. Um, as per, per earlier discussions about moving the YA collection up in the library, that has been achieved. We, I got the, uh, the impact driver out and reconfigured some shelving um, this, in the last couple of weeks here. Um, we moved the YA collection up where the DVDs used to be. Um, so DVDs and audiobooks have been combined where large print used to be to be sort of a little media area. Large print moved over to where YA was. Um, so kind of a little bit of a shuffling around of some of the collections, which I'm excited to get everyone to come in and see. Um, but yeah, the YA collection fits really well in that spot. Um, it's actually it displays pretty nicely on those shelves. We've got um, some of the part, the outer part of the circle there with our uh, young adult, it's going to be for the young adult nonfiction collection and like uh, the, um, uh, the graphic novels have moved over to where I think the newspapers used to be um, sort of on the other it, that's like that's where they used to be when I worked here previously so I'm not sure what was there most recently oh yeah we've got the whole YA area kind of up front now um, so the next steps will be to um, work with our communications department hopefully to get some uh, wall like some big wall art some graphics uh, I'm thinking about getting some you know um, uh, maybe a fresh coat of paint over there, like change of color, maybe some lights. Um, kind of going to have to just budget it out. Um, so yeah, we're really happy about that. Can I ask about where the where the DVDs um, are now and the other uh, like entertainment digital yeah. media like that? Is that within like a line of sight of of staff pretty routinely to? Uh, yeah. Do you remember the wall outside the men's room where the large print books were? Right. That wall is all the feature films, like A through Z. And then um, we actually separated out the TV series. So anything that's like a TV series, we put a yellow sticker, like a yellow letter sticker on it instead of the blue one. Okay. And those are now on the outside part of the circle where large print books used to be. Right. Um, and then, uh, so that's all very, very visible from that, uh, it's that that standing staff station that's kind of you know at the front part of the computers there mm -hmm. um and that's actually going to be sort of our security person station um okay. so that's hopefully going to be pretty nice you know controllable lines of sight um and, <laughs> and, and, and it's not they're not the target of theft that they were when dvds were kind of the dominant format because it right. used to be that people would steal them and then take them to like secondhand stores to try to turn them into money um, so I don't, I don't, I don't think our theft rate is quite what it was back when they were of higher value, but you know, we still want to keep an eye on them. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, we, with promoting library, uh, promoting library materials, um, we did the a little bit of social media and email newsletter digital promotion of the digital uh, platforms. If anybody thinks of other great ways to promote those, I'm always uh, I'm always open to suggestions. Um, I love the signage. Oh, I, I was going to well, say, yeah, yeah, moment. the one outside the, the curbside pickup. Awesome. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. So that, that one, awesome. yeah, that one, uh, that was uh, our staff member uh, Mull. They did a great job with that one. Um, and so we're, you know, yeah, if you th I think we might want to try some more stuff like that because that, that I thought was really cool and keep it fresh, you know, so it's not just the same thing every time, you know, having a you know, different signs each time you come up or not at, maybe every time, but you know, what stretch sw swap them out at least on a weekly basis. Um, we have, uh, library card registration days planned for a couple of Saturdays here in September where people where we're going to let you know, people in the library just to come in and get live, get library cards. Um, 
and that and we're not quite at the reopening for uh, letting people search, you know, check out materials in person yet, but we're 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 closing in on that, and I think uh, card registration days will be a step in that direction for sure. Um, yeah, increased in person and virtual visits kind of ties into the you know what we're talking going to talk about in the new library website a bit here. That's that's the domain that we purchased. Um, and you can already, I suspect some of you have already gone there to kind of get a preview. Um, so yeah, we, this has been a long time coming. This, this, this project actually started uh, before I came on board, I think sometime late last year. Um, we've done some redesign um, since I came on. And then it was a little bit of a, you know, a, a under the radar sort of thing at the time. And we, we have lost, took a longer than I'd have liked, but we went through the uh, various approvals, you know, just getting everyone on board, all the necessary stakeholders, including our, our communications department and our IT department. So, um, yeah, we're, we, we think we're ready to move forward with that one pretty soon here. We just need to update the content because um, it's all placeholder. Uh, we approved the proofs of the Share Your Heritage Oral History pr project. That's when we're converting um, some of the analog oral histories that we have to, or I don't know if they're analog, but um, putting them online for an archive. Um, similar to that is the uh, migration of the existing online photo collection to the Marmot Digital Archive. Uh, I met with Celine this last month and kind of had her walk through what she's been doing on that. And it's, it is, she is doing a very excellent and very involved. Like it's, it's very detailed. Um, I don't know if any of you uh, have, have seen it at all, um, but she is going through and doing a lot of um, metadata tagging on, on that whole photo collection. And so it's going to be a really valuable uh, resource for researchers. Um, anybody who's doing this with a, you know, the, for whatever reason, but it's taking her a long time. Um, so I asked, when does she think she'll realistically be close to having finished? And she said, ask me again in October. So that's <laughs> why I'll update you all in October. And we'll hey, be really I have a happy. question. On, I have a question yeah. on that. That was the that was the existing online photos that are migrating. Um, Correct. Right? Yep. And, yep. And there exactly. Are, and there are still, if I recall correctly, there are still securely archived um, actual hard copy photos remaining to be scanned, right? Um, you know, I, I believe that's correct. I don't know that that part I'm not 100% sure about. But I'm, I, I think you're right. Okay, I mean, I, that's yeah. something I would, um, it's, it sounds like they're, they're not in a position to decay, um, it, based on what we discussed right. when John was, was okay. here. I was, I was curious if there was a a timetable or look for grants or anything to get the rest of those scanned in some, in, at some point? Um, that's a good question. Um, let me follow up with Celine about that because this honestly is one of those things that I'm, I'm doing my best to kind of wrap my head around what the project is, where it's been, where it's going. So I'm sure. <laughs> okay, me, thank you. Yeah, I'll write that down real quick. Okay. And I'm gonna stop share. Okay, Debbie, I hand it back to you. All right, I missed. Did anyone have anything else to ask about the action plan or to discuss about it? Um, okay, on to new business and new library website. Okay, so, um, Actually, let me, I'm going to go ahead and screen share again. Oh, you got it. I have yeah. it. Oh, you got it? I got it. Okay. Okay. So I think you, some of you probably had a chance to look at this already. Um, this is the basic design of the new library website. Um, this is what it looks like on, um, uh, 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 a desktop computer. Um, as you can see, the content is, you know, a little bit placeholder with some of our summer reading stuff and uh, 
computers available by appointment starting July 20th, but we wanted to, we, we set it up to just to run through, like I said, the approvals process and we'll go through this week if, and, and then an update. Um, so this is, um, like I said, the most important thing is to have the catalog search. Um, so I believe that this is working as intended at this point. Yep. So, you know, you can just jump right to your catalog search from that, uh, from that site. When that's the, that's the key thing that was missing from anglewoodco.gov slash library. Um, the website search, um, I was messing around with this a little bit and I'm not hundred percent sure if it's quite, um, yeah, it's not quite where I want it to be. Um, because I believe we have some of the, you know, like a page like this should be showing up in that website search. So we may disable that functionality if we're not finding that it's actually being very useful. Um, and so the idea is, you know, we have this sort of like, you know, it's a very simple layout. This is done with Weebly, which is a um, uh, free like drag and drop editor. The idea was to make it simple enough that library staff could be involved in keeping this up to date as opposed to everything having to run through me. Uh, right now, not a lot of people want to mess with the CMS because it's a little bit uh, arcane. Um, so uh, yeah, this is, you can kind of see we've separated out the, the navigation tree here is something that we've given a lot of thought to. Um, so we started separating out, you know, families, adults, the e-library, you know, you could kind of see the, the, the top level headings we chose here and hopefully creating a, a straightforward user experience. Um, and I know some of you, I'm looking at you, Helene, have a lot of experience with this sort of thing. So i um, very interested, you know, in, in, in feedback, because this is something that we're gonna get a lot of feedback when we launch it, you know, with the public, I, I suspect we're gonna get some, you know, some good perspectives on how this is working for everybody. Um, but I when think that this, go ahead. From menus, just a little slower, just, I just wanna read them. Yeah, yeah. So you can kind of get a sense of, and, and these are not all final necessarily, just giving you. One question that uh, jumps out at me is the calendar. Is that the, um, cause the calendar has, um, is it not a combined calendar? Like if you look at it, does it not have like adult and children on the same calendar or are they separate calendars? We've had a lot of conversations about okay. calendars. <laughs> so um, this, this is funny. This, so this calendar here, this adults one, I'll take you to this page. Uh, you can see it's not up to date. This is a placeholder for, this was one of our staff members really wants it to kind of be like this, uh, where we have program descriptions. We're gonna have, you know, you have links to register, like which we're right now, we would talk about integrating with RecTrack, which is what the Recreation Center uses. We've also talked about just sticking with Google Forms for registrations. We've got some, you know, conversations happening around that. But um, to me, the challenge with something like this is, first of all, this is not a calendar layout. And second, this is not a, um, uh, it's not, it's duplication of information. You know, like there's different places that the information lives. Like, uh, you know, we have the Citizen Magazine, we've got the city's website, which right now my, the city's website calendar is kind of a little bit more locked down because admittedly there were hundreds of incorrect items from the library um, because we had all these recurring programs that were listed, like so story times, you know, every time we had a story time, it was listed on the city's calendar. And then COVID happened and they all got canceled and they, none of them got removed from the city's calendar because there was no library manager uh, when that first happened. And then, you know, I came on and I had no idea that that was something that needed to be done until somebody pointed out like, hey, did you know that there's all these, you know? Um, so um, the way we're doing it for the kids here is currently, I just set it up to link out to the Facebook page because if it's on the Facebook page, then I figure, you know, I know our children's team is keeping that up to date. Um, it's, a, it, it's unified resource so that, you know, everyone who's following us on Facebook has the same information as somebody who's visiting the website. And that way we're not having to keep the information up to date in two places. Um, so I was suggesting to the team that we might, the simplest solution and the best marketing might just be to just use Facebook, the Facebook events calendar as kind of our canonical events calendar um, and then minimize duplication otherwise. Um, but, you know, like I said, that's kind of a, a bit of an internal conversation. Do you all have any thoughts on that? 
I like that approach personally because I think mm -hmm. it's good to have the integrated social media into the website, right. which was something else that I, I didn't think I saw on there was any like or follow buttons or even like a Facebook feed um, mm -hmm. on there. I think that with your social media efforts, you'll double your efforts if you integrate social media more on the new website. I like that suggestion. Yeah, let me see what uh, what tools we have available. I mean, I know we have some limited ability to do like uh, HTML embeds and you know that that editor, um, and then um, they may have some uh, widgets that they that they have as well. Uh, it's a like it's a it's a proprietary. Weebly is a proprietary t tool from Squarespace, like or Square. You know, the not Squarespace. That that's a competing. <laughs> that's a different editor. Square, the the digital payments company, is the one that does Weebly. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, some degree you were kind of tied to the limit, you know, the strengths and limitations of that platform. Mm -hmm. And so this this just to contextualize this a little bit. Um, we like I said, this started a while back, and then in the over the last few months, it became clear that the city is looking at doing a big update to the city's website, including the creation of microsites for um, things like the library. And so, to some degree, I'm not sure how long lived this site will even be, because if the new microsites offer all of this you know, the, 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 the sort of, you know, I think this visually looks a little bit nicer than the current library website. Um, but the visual upgrades, the integration of a catalog search bar, all the you know, sort of the benefits that we get from doing this site, including the ease of use for staff, um, plus some of the things that this is lacking, you know, if the, if the, if the new CMS has all the advantages and none of the disadvantages, then that's obviously the direction we'd go long term. Um, so, I don't entirely know everything there is to know about that upcoming platform. I actually am I'm signed up for a all day meeting about it tomorrow. So I'll know a lot more tomorrow. Um, but yeah, that, that's the, but I appreciate the idea of doing things like social media embeds. Um, you know, I think the only thing I've seen here is a tiny little Facebook button down here. So that's, that's fair. yeah, I, I think we could do better than that. So <laughs> um, appreciate that. You know, on this on this searching, um, is the is the searching all like a intuitive and algorithm driven, or is there an option for um, like a Boolean search um, ability? Uh, right here. Well, yeah. Um, and and in general, is that something that that is a, a, a plan for the for the search? Because um, I mean, that, that's I I hate the fact that that true Boolean searching is so rare now because often <laughs> I really know exactly what I'm looking for. You know? Sure. I, this is just embed. This is just a little bit of embedded code from Pika, um, which is the search, the, the, like the catalog, the web catalog that we use. Um, so the, this behaves exactly like a general keyword search does in Pika. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I believe that does include Booleans and, you know, like, if, you know, I think if you hover over it, it's a surrounding term with quotes, we'll limit those or limit your results. So it has, that's basically just that. This just, you know, whatever you put in here just kicks you out to a general keyword search in Pika. The search worked great for me just now. Okay, cool. The, like, I mean, I looked up pigeon and it sent me right to Mo Willems. Book, right, so right to Mo that's Willem. all I've got that's to right. do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I really agree with what Helene said though. Um, in integrating the socials and agree about the calendar just having it all in one place is really nice the only other yeah. option i would think of it would be like a google calendar kind of widget where you could actually see it there too but so oh, yeah but i think that the like the i think that the good thing about facebook is that it like reminds you of events and i think that having that is nice yeah so I played, I got it live at one point. I was playing with using an embedded Google calendar to see if that made sense. But the problem with the Google yeah. calendars is that you're just so limited in terms of the design. It always mm -hmm. looks like Google calendar and it, uh -huh. <laughs> and it, it's really not the best. And you, you know, there's very limited controls over like what information you can display. Um, right. So I, I like the Facebook one just because it, you know, you have the chance for these big attractive graphics um, and you have like the, all the information for recurring events or for sequenced events very easily. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think this is, even though it's not embedded, even though it's a, you know, external link, I think it works nicely. Yeah. 
I think it looks good. I, I like that it's something like Weebly so that you can easily update it and you're not beholden to a lot of technical intervention to have to update it. Yeah. One thing that I'm wondering is about the teens. Um, if teens are going to use this site, I wonder if they're going to find their way through the family menu. I, I think that 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 that's something that I also wonder. That, then that mm. you don't want to have too many top level you know links there, but I don't. I do think maybe teens te tweens being its own separate one makes sense. Um, it's. It's a small user group, but it's an important one. So um, yeah, thanks for that. I'll, I'll talk to Kimberly and Karan about what they want to do with that. That's um, an excellent yeah, point. I, yeah. I think changing it to like children's, teens, adults children's, teens, would adults. be, yeah, instead of fam, like I like families, but it, yeah, I, I, I think, think children's, think right. te teens, adults is more like library lingo too. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. I kind of worry about research being a little bit library lingo-y too. Um, and it's necessary, but I, I you know, trying mm -hmm. not to, trying to have as few things as possible that all really makes sense. Like I always see libraries with like a big link that says databases and I'm like, that doesn't mean anything to anybody. Like, <laughs> well, I I mean, maybe, maybe to the people who are on a library board, but for our general users. I feel like I don't worry about the extra menu item as much because I think from a user standpoint, it's better to have the options across the top. Mm -hmm. and be able to navigate well mm -hmm. than to have things too buried and yeah. there is some room there um to have more and and as an academic i think research does make sense to a percent of the population sure yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, that's good, good enough yeah, yeah. What, what okay. falls under research? Is it, is it, it, it it's, it, well, Scott, it's the databases. Auto repair. <laughs> auto repair. <laughs> I wouldn't look there for auto repair. <laughs> right. Yeah. I would look under like how to or DIY for some of those things. Yeah. I wonder if like um, resources would be better or like. Resources um, might be a good one. And, and, you know, we're really thinking about like having. Um, like in the library part of like moving you know, sort of the collection, you know, moving around and rethinking some of the internal layout. We're talking about having put building like a community resource center in the library yeah. where it's like, here's resources about like, you know, uh, employment, here's resources about various, you know, financial, you know, financial assistance programs. Here's ones about, mm -hmm. for, you know, here's an area for people experiencing homelessness or addiction. Um, and like, so that use of the term resources is something I think we're, 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 we're it's a word that's getting thrown around a lot internally. Yeah. So I think that, that that might be something to that. And I also, I'm looking at the mobile and I feel like there's a, well, it's too bright. I think there's a ton of space for having extra menu items. So I- On mobile, yeah. I oh yeah, thanks for, yeah, thanks for pulling it up on mobile. I don't think I have a good way. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure I could collapse down my window here, but um, yeah, you can yeah. use the same URL on your phone and kind of get an experience of what it's like. Yep. And I, th I think yep. it, it, it's, you know, the, it's responsive design. It, it feels like it translates okay. Um, I feel like the more you try to drill down to the sub menus on mobile, the harder it gets. Mm -hmm. and our, our top level uh, menu items are not currently like, um, like, so if you, you can't click directly on adults and go to all this, you know, page that takes you, that has like contents from there. So, which I think makes sense here. Um, and it doesn't work mm -hmm. quite as well on mobile because you have to do an extra little drop down. So yeah, I think it's okay. one of those quirks. Yeah. As someone who operates like primarily on mobile, I don't you use are a browser much. Most, I think it's great. Totally. That's yeah. the, most people at this point, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I, I wish I don't know. I, mean, I never <laughs> really looked at Google Analytics. I'm sure I could get some numbers about that, but that'd be interesting to see. <laughs> As a stay-at-home parent who doesn't use a laptop, I think it's, oh, I yeah. think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it cool. seems like the um, if you change if you either separated research and resources or switched the terms and then pulled mm -hmm. teams out, it almost seems like you're really mirroring the physical library at that point. Yeah. Um, like there's a research. There's re if you're gonna have a resource center, you've got the kids, the adults, the teens. So there's something good about that because if you're used to going in physically and you know mm -hmm. the areas and the departments and what you use, you can easily identify with the menu items that way. Right, that's interesting, so, yeah. Yeah, I would almost lean into mirroring the physical library space. Yeah, I like time. that, mm -hmm. I like that. Um, how do you feel about e-library as sort of a header term for downloadables and streaming stuff? I mean, I, I, love I, it. I, I, I okay. I think it's good. 
I think okay. we talked about that at a meeting with John and I think it's Oh, okay. Good. That's good to know. Cause I, I probably went to 30 yeah. different library websites, right? Keeping a list of the different terms that everybody used to describe their digital content. <laughs> I think my only like um, picky thing would be as far as menu items where it says your account and there's no actual way to like get to your account directly. Uh, okay. Like it yeah. goes to catalog. It goes to catalog. And as someone yeah. who accesses her account often to yep. keep track of what we yep. have, I think that that would be beneficial. I was, I think about the about into your account feels like that, if that one still feels a little messy to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And especially burying your next read under your account and there's now a yeah. kid's next read, you know, under the kids. So that, that should, yeah. that your next read really should be with adults, adults or whatever the relevant population is. Um, and I don't know if any of you saw, but the children's team did an amazing job with this kid's next read. Um, I'd no, recommend, uh, they, they did a Google form and it's, um, it has a logical flow to it. So your answers to, you know, this, these questions yeah. will inform the answers or the, the, you know, the prompts that you get for the next, you know, uh, on the next page of the form. Um, and, and thanks to, and so you can really drill down into some good, into some good, like specific topics and finding the right age groups and all that. Um, and uh, they're just, they're doing this, not, unlike the adult Your Next Read has been, we'll email you your recommendations and you can tell us if you want to put any of them on hold. And this one, it's just like, well, we're, gonna, we're just gonna put these on hold. Like we think we're doing a good job with this. We're just gonna put them on hold for you. You can come pick them up and then you're good to go. Um, so I really like that. I, I'm excited about this. I think my only, I don't know if I should tell Kimberly or you or who, I feel like there should be a like, do you, a notes section on the, your next, the kids, your next reads, because there's nowhere to like, say, I want books about princesses or mermaids. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Just um, this picture. Drill down through it. It has a logical flow. So tr give it a try. Um, if you enter your information for. Yeah. The, oh, page. after, after next, will it ask you? Exactly. Okay, got it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. giving it a quick look. Good. Play through, play with it. Give us some feedback. I will. Um, yeah. I'd be really curious. And it does drive me crazy. It's marketers kids next reads and we have it on the site as kids next read. And that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of details that drive me nuts. <laughs> I would also maybe think for, um, well, for especially kids books, but maybe any kind of books, like a quantity, like if I'm going to fill out that form, mm -hmm. what if I want like four or six, right. And right. not just one. It says up to 10, I think. Yeah, and I think, but I think that uh, kind of just at the discretion of the staff, like uh, that, we that, find that. that are relevant. Mm -hmm. um, and so, because the idea is basically, but I, but I appreciate that because yeah, the, like it, it, the, the idea is like you come in, you grab the ones that seem good, or you grab the stack, you mm -hmm. kind of can go through it and just if you don't like anything, just put it straight in the uh, um, book drop. Oh, okay. Now I got through to the next page. Okay. I think that's awesome. I think it's great. Yeah, I thought they did a really good job with that. And we'll be imitating that with the adult one. We're just, you know, kind of playing with this one first. Okay. Any other questions or uh, comments on the new library website? Can we just scroll down and look at the bottom real quick? Okay. I love it. I think it looks great. I think so too. It looks really good. And the fact that you guys can all work on it is so important to keep it like alive and fresh. So I hope That's, whatever yeah. new website setup is that you don't lose that. That's so key. And that's why the idea of doing the social media embed also helps a lot because then, you know, mm -hmm. you're not, yeah, you're, you're automatically populating new content and, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, that's, it's, unfortunately we won't be able to turn this field here into a social media embed, but you know, let, we'll, we'll play with it. I think that's a good suggestion. I have one question that could be related to this, um, which is today I was thinking about what is your curbside inclement weather plan <laughs> with days like this where maybe you guys are closing or uh, whatever, people don't want to come. Do you have that in mind with these, <laughs> with the winter months? I around? had not. Or is that a bug I in your I appreciate <laughs> you bringing that up. I had not considered that. Um, no, as, I, as I was leaving today, I was like, oh, it's nice that we're in the parking garage and it's covered for yeah. curbside. So that's <laughs> um, probably we would, um, 
you know, if the, if the city's going to do a closure, uh, we'll, we'll have to just communicate that out. Most people who do uh, curbside are get providing some kind of contact information. Yeah. So probably at least try to do a mass email out to all the people okay. who are, you know, scheduled for curbside that day. But yeah, that's funny. Uh, we'll give that, I guess we'll <laughs> give that some thought. <laughs> just to have like a, like even just a banner, like on your Google Doc form. Yeah. Like, hey, if yeah. the weather's bad in the coming months, this is our plan. That's a good call. Yeah, that's a good call. You know, maybe Thanks. something to explore just to throw out there that goes along with that is like push notifications for patrons who uh, like select them. And mm -hmm. they that could um, disseminate all kinds of information such as like changes in curbside pickup now that it's relevant, but also um, maybe remind people of upcoming events. I'm not sure. I think it might be worth like throwing out there and looking yeah. into it because it's very effective. And if people want the notification, then it can be pretty effective way to get people mm -hmm. to show up at the right time and keep everybody well informed. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure how many people would want, want that. Um, but the systems for it are pretty easy to implement. We used a service called Shoutbomb, um, which is a text messaging service that actually integrates with the library catalog. Um, and so when people's holds are ready, they get a notification around that. But it, you know, I ought to look into what controls oh. there are past that. It yeah, hasn't I've been, never. I know not I a lot of people. I haven't ever gotten one. <laughs> it, I don't know how much promotional weight was ever put behind it. I mean, it was already live when I started in 2017 and then um, had already kind of felt like, you know, interest had peaked and had come back down. Um, but I think it's partly because the system was a little finicky. Um, and so I might have to, yeah, but I, but I appreciate that. I mean, that's probably something we need to revisit because um, it's, it's, certainly a way that like like marie was saying you, look, you know your phone is your primary computer and that's true for most mm -hmm. people so yeah text notifications lean good, good, good it's it's a good thought yeah just a great marketing tool generally do you have a if you have a specific platform that you've used you know i'd be you know always curious so it sounds like you have one there's probably some kind of setting on there um to do some settings me i don't know maybe uh you can send out to everybody who's in the system um, I think there's like rules, laws where you have to offer the ability for them to reply. Unsubscribe. To stuff. Yeah. 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 But um, it might be worth it. Like maybe when um, the next stage of opening happens to just blast everybody and just see what happens mm -hmm. uh, might not be a bad strategy and then figure out, well, how many people got blasted? How many replied stop? Right. Um, and just that might be like a good starting place just to see what the interest is. And then it would be somewhere you would check a box to um, trying to think how it would work, but somewhere you might check a box that says that you do want to receive notifications. And I don't know if that's when you sign up or where that happens or if that's necessary, but that's something I've seen, I've used, right? Where mm -hmm. I've like signed onto something and they're like, check if you want notifications. Um, I always don't. I'm not a notification person. I don't want to be <laughs> texted personally, but I think it is the direction we're going. And with all the um, dissemination, dissemination of information, I think it's really valuable. And if it's community-based, I'm more receptive personally. If it's something that is community-based and I do want to know, oh, you're going to be open or you're not. And, you know, everything's in flux right now. So people might be really receptive to it. I'll look into it. Yeah. Um, cause I shout bomb is the, like I said, that's what we've used in the past. It's what we have some people signed up for. It's not uh, like, it, it, but I don't know um, if I have as much control as what you're describing. So for what you're describing is very similar to what I see when I, when we use my Emma for the newsletter, um, the unsubscribe controls, you know what I mean? Like analytics mm -hmm. on usage um, or, or responsiveness. Um, and then um I'm sorry if you can hear all the, the screaming upstairs and some kids <laughs> kids running around being goofy. Um, Shoutbomb might be managed by Marmot, um, when, in which case I, I won't have the same granularity of control, and in which case I may or may not be the best platform for us to focus on going forward. So we'll do a little, we'll do a little looking. That's a good call. The city probably has something like that, and tomorrow you're going to be in that meeting. Maybe there's somebody there who might have more information. Mm -hmm. Maybe the city uses a platform that the library can piggyback off of. Yeah. yeah. Cool. 
any other discussion on the uh, new uh, website? Just that it's awesome. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. Yeah, we're happy. I agree. Um, would anyone like to bring up any other new business? Okay, um, old business has the library reopening update, <clears throat> which is uh, quite an update to me. I was unaware of it. Um, so really interesting. <laughs> well, it's pretty limited right now. So um, we're Monday through Saturday, 12 to 5. We're open for um, walk-ins for the public computers. That's where we're starting. Um, and uh, basically we're limiting that base uh, on the physical layout of the computers. Um, so this week we started just to see, or last, or last week we started just to see what would happen with five people at a time. So very, very limited numbers. And we can, we could bump that up to 10 at our public computers before we start to run out of the, the I mean, basically that's based on five clusters of computers. There's four, at e four computers at each cluster, but you can't have people side by side because then they're within six feet of each other. Um, so if you, if, if they sit kitty corner, then they're, you know, seven feet apart. And so we're good to go. So we can, we've got 10 computers available. Um, and so that's, that's what, we, so we've just been, uh, all, all entrance into the library right now is through the north side doors. Um, we have our, um, security person most days, that's Brittany. Um, she's out there just when you, when you approach, she just checks, she just writes down a first name. As long as we haven't exceeded the number of people we can have in at a time, let, let the person in, make a note of what time they come in. Um, and then the staff member will, is greeting people as they come in to help direct them to a computer. Kind of, we're all working together to assess to make sure that um, face coverings are being worn correctly. Um, that's definitely been the biggest challenge so far um, is just uh, you know, maintaining mass compliance um, and specifically um, nose coverage. I just, I feel like we're where everyone who's working in retail or where, you know, any, any interaction with the public right now has, has been for a while, which is just, you know, really having a hard time keeping, keeping the nose, you know, keeping the mask up here rather than down here. Um, but I, you know, we have some staff who are, um, for various reasons in vulnerable populations. And we, we you know, we really think it's important to protect them. And then a lot of our users are in vulnerable populations. And so it's really important that they protect each other. Um, and so that's, that's where we're at right now. Um, we are um, still doing the thing with our teams where half of our staff are on a Monday, Wednesday rotation, half the staff are on a Tuesday, Thursday rotation, and then we're alternating Fridays and Saturdays. As soon as we can complete the hiring process for our, our currently open positions, we're going to be going back to our normal staff like uh, rotation, like um, so that we'll have seven days a week people available. So we'll increase to seven days a week. Um, like I said, we'll be increasing the numbers over time. And I think when we go back to that seven day a week, that's when we'll be in the best position to start uh, doing um, regular circulation services again. I don't know if we'll immediately jump to our normal 9.30 to 7.30, Monday through Thursday. I think that'll probably wait just a bit longer um, just because there's so much, things are so much more staff intensive right now. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's where we're at in terms, in terms of reopening. You know, you, you say the, the north door, but for some reason that building completely bollocks is my oh, sorry that's is, yeah the traffic circle side traffic circle okay, side thank you. so the opposite side of the curbside stuff okay thank it's you. a bigger lobby and so our thought was well if we you know there's more room for the security person and we're putting up like some uh, some plexi panels there so that they can be at, at a safe physical distance oh from sure that makes sense yeah people who are coming in and out yeah do, would you do you think you would do like um, by appointment browsing for opening up? You know, based on, or? You know, based on our experience with by appointment for computers, it was just, yeah, it so, didn't work. Such, it, it, it worked, but it was just barely anybody did it. Um, yeah. I think when we're ready to do uh, browsing of the collection, we're just going to, we'll probably limit the numbers at first. Yeah. I mean, I think we're going to have to, um, we'll probably have to limit the numbers through the end of, you know, sort of the public health orders that are in effect. Um, but yeah, I think we'll probably just try to go straight to walk-ins. Okay. 
I've, I, I talked to a lot of libraries that did and the appointment based browsing and they all moved mm -hmm. on from it within weeks. They were all just like this. This was not. A, oh, interesting. Okay. Experience. Yeah. Uh, any other questions or discussion on the uh, library reopening update? Uh, does anyone have any other old business they would like to bring up? Okay. Um, well, I guess it's staff's choice then. Um, Mark? <laughs> I'm good. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> De Debbie, did you have anything? Debbie, you there? <laughs> I couldn't get to my unmute button. No, okay. I did not. I was, I was afraid you left. <laughs> when you screen share, you lose that. Okay. Did you have anything for uh, staff's choice? I do not. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, okay. I guess it's a uh, board member's choice. I'll just go along the order of the people I see here. Um, Jen, do you have anything? Nothing other than, you know, the kids are back in school and so far, by and large, things have gone well. Um, yeah. We're in school five days a week. Um, we did have to roll remote for our eighth graders at EMS um, because we had a kiddo come up positive um, for the virus. And so not the whole eighth grade was quarantined. Um, just a small portion of the eighth grade was quarantined, but because some teachers you know, serve both and, you know, that sort of a thing. They didn't have enough staff to keep everybody, the rest of the eighth grade in, um, in school. So they'll all come back I think Monday. Um, but other than that, everybody's been doing really well. Um, everybody's just, you know, the, the sheer look of joy on kids' faces when they came back um, was actually really neat to see. Everybody had big smiles on. It was like, oh, the teachers were excited. The kids were excited despite the masks and the, you know, six feet away and, you know, everybody's learning as they go and, um, sure. but, uh, yeah, we're hanging in there. Okay. A, a positive case didn't lead to any further cases? Not so far. That's no. Good. Um, and so, you know, fingers crossed. I mean, unfortunately it's just, you, you know, you kind of go well and it, so it begins, <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. unfortunately there's, there's, no matter how much you clean and how much you, you know, that sort of a thing, there's only so much you can do, but I know they're working really hard with the kids to keep everybody six feet apart because the, the, the fact that if you can stay, stay the far enough apart and wear the mask that helps lower the, ch the chance that, you know, it's going to spread and things like that. So, and, you know, thank goodness the family kept the student home so the, the student was only in school like maybe a day or two or something before mm. they started kind of feeling yucky. And so they kept the student home, which that helped, you know, for once, yay, somebody kept their kids home. Um, <laughs> because usually that doesn't happen. If you, if you have kids, a lot of the times it's like, uh, let me see if I can dose you with Tylenol and get you to school long enough for me to like get a half day of work in, you know, that sort of a thing where I think families are really taking it seriously and they're keeping kids home if their kids don't feel well. Um, staff is really taking it seriously. I mean, it's harder, a little bit harder for staff because staff is used to, you know, oh, I've got the sniffles, I'll come in, it's fine, I'm not that sick. And now they're like, nope, you know, got the sniffles, got to stay home. And so I think everybody's hyper aware, which I'm really hopeful that that'll help actually long term with just, mm -hmm. just the general yuckies, like not just the coronavirus, but just <laughs> general flu and colds and, yeah. you know, runny noses and that sort of a thing. If everybody, um, is, you know, is actually does what we've asked them to do, you know, to keep kids home and to stay home if you're not feeling well. Um, I think it'll be good for everybody in the long run. So we're, we're hoping we're doing what we we're doing our best. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, Sarah, you have anything? Um, I'm in back to school mode too. And I'm really happy to hear that things are going so well for Inglewood. My daughter's in a started high school at Littleton High School and it's very it's almost exactly the same way Inglewood's doing it and I love the hybrid model I think it's awesome <laughs> but so far no one's sick so that's good but that's about it for me all right thank you Amy um I'm laid up in bed with a back injury so that's oh, unfortunate. No. I know I it'll go away I'm sure but 
I can't even go look at the snow, so I'm a little sad. <laughs> but um, yeah, other than that, I'm just uh, wishing my heater would turn on magically from my room. <laughs> oh, well, you know, the snow kind of looks like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got a picture of it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I'm sorry your back's hurting. That, that, uh, that stinks. Thanks. That's pretty disabling when your back is. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I can't even move, so that's annoying. Uh, well, I'll keep my fingers crossed you feel better soon. Thanks. Um, Marie? Um, I'm in school mom mode. I, my kids are still home. My husband's home. It's Groundhog Day here still. <laughs> so, but I'm, uh, I'm like doing homeschool five days a week, so we're like using... I'm really... I'm really going through all the children's books on the catalog, but I just, I know I mentioned it earlier that I really liked the signage, but what I especially appreciated of the signage by the curbside checkout was that five of the eight books highlighted were by black authors. And I noted that and I really appreciated it and thought it was awesome. Nice. So good job. Thank yeah. you, whoever made that. That is good to hear. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, Helene? Nothing for me, thank you. Okay, well, good to see everybody. Um, I'm uh, just, uh, um, you know, for a while, didn't get to see the grandkids all that much in the early days of the pandemic. Um, and uh, as as people have figured things out more, we're we're getting to do more of that. So life's good, you know. It's, I'm I'm all in favor of that. So that's much of what I've been doing. So, um, well, if there's nothing else. Um, we're adjourned. Thank you very much. It's good to see y'all. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. Amy, Bye. Amy, feel better. Yeah. 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 Feel better, Amy. Thank you. Bye. Okay.